Hi, I'm Chris Maddock, designer of the Harmony House. I'm Bob Douglas. And I'm Christy. Oftentimes, building terminology can be difficult to understand. Let's see if we can clear up any confusion around these terms. The fast foot monopore system is used to enable a foundation footing and an ICF wall to be poured at the same time, so that it is one contiguous unit. The fast foot monopore system uses reinforced plastic fabric to form the footing for an ICF foundation, thereby eliminating much of the footing formwork, lumber, stakes, joints, and the need for two concrete pours, saving both time and money. Adjustable supports are used to hold the ICF blocks above the ground at the required footing height. Fast foot is pre-attached to the bottom of the ICF blocks thereby forming the footing. Hi, my name is Manny. Uh, I'm running the concrete pump truck uh, today. I'm the operator. Uh, they've hired my 32 meter boom pump to uh, pour this job. With these switches, I control the boom and I control the flow of the concrete that comes through all these pipes from the other end. Uh, the mixer truck is unloading into the pump and then uh, I turn the pump on and it comes out the other end. Okay, so what we're seeing today is, uh, or at this time, is the uh, concrete being poured in the footings and uh, a vibrator being used to get the concrete to flow properly. So uh, a layer of concrete is put in the footings and then part way up the first block. They carry the concrete pumper around the whole foundation and then come back later after it's set up so there's not too much pressure on the footings. You can see the footing adapts to variations of the ground. It's very, very personal that way. So we have Joey Fern here from Fabform Industries, the company that has developed this uh, innovative footing system that uses fabric. And uh, the fabric, of course, contains the concrete when the concrete is being poured. But after it's in place, it also acts as a moisture barrier preventing moisture from the ground getting into the foundation wall and reducing moisture entry into the house. So maybe Joey can explain how the system works here. Well, uh, we, previously we, we already uh, attached the fabric into the webs of the ICF here. And we've already filled our footing with our, with our concrete here. So as you can see, we've got no concrete spilling out. We're not wasting any concrete. And as Chris said, we've got a, a damp proof membrane for the whole home. All right. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gerald from Gerald James Concrete. When I was young, I was going to school, I didn't have any money, and it was an easy way to get paid. I was tired of being broke. Uh, it's honest work, keeps you in shape. And when I was a kid, I used to be getting in trouble for playing in the mud. Now they pay me a lot of money to play in the mud. So the top of our wall has been troweled off. I'm just cleaning off some of this gunk off the top here. And down here, our damp proof footing has been set. So I'm done, I'm finished. We'll see you later. Okay, so Arthur, we, uh, everything's looking pretty good. We just need to, uh, we'll need to clean up some of this stuff, some of the concrete and some of the, uh, get some of the fabric footing cleaned up a little bit when we do our full on membrane. But since it didn't come today, we'll, uh, We'll have, to, we'll have to try our mock-up at another time and we'll put, uh, put some on and, and see whether it's going to stick to this uh, without primer or not. But since it didn't show up, I'll see you on Monday.
And we're right now placing the damp proofing membrane onto the ICF walls. How are you doing there? Yeah? yeah. Um, there's a backing paper to it. It has self-adhesive to it. And as you can probably see, it's very effective. Okay. Uh, we like to keep the joints as recommended by the manufacturer with about a three inch lap and applied vertically as we are now. Uh, it goes on reasonably quick. And as we get down to the footing level, you, you may notice that we've already wrapped the footing. In this case, there is no cold joint, but normally there's a cold joint when you do a double pour that that requires a little more attention to detail than we actually need here. But again, you may notice that we're putting the membrane onto the bag footing. Now the bag footing, of course, is a, a, a damp proof membrane in itself for the footing itself. So there's absolutely no moisture going into this type of foundation. Hi, I'm Corey. Hi, we're, I'm Dave. We're both here to uh, look at the waterproofing today. So when we first walk on site, we're thinking to ourselves, you know, what is it here that I've come to review? And what are some of the, you know, some of the ways that people go wrong in installing certain products? What are the things to look out for? Uh, thinking ahead of how things are gonna come together and making sure that, um, that you know, the basement walls are gonna be able to integrate properly with the walls above. So we're, we're, tr we're trying to assist the contractor in making sure that that all happens and that all comes together to make a watertight house and a house that performs in a way that is consistent with the owner's expectations in regards to the water not getting into the building, comfort, heat, loss, things like that. Uh, so when we first walk on, like, like Corey said, we are here to be looking at the waterproofing membrane uh, at, on top of the um, ICF. Uh, and essentially, you know, we knew the specifications and knew exactly what we were looking for and kind of what were the tricky areas. And again, as we said, it looks, you know, looks like they're doing a good job and there's just some minor things that, that need to be slightly adjusted. And, but other than that, it looks like they're doing good here. So we're probably, we're just gonna go over a touch base with the contractor, let them know what we saw and what are the areas that need to get addressed and get those fixed up and then away we go. Yeah, a lot of what we're also doing is that we've done the design on the project. So really we're also verifying that, as Dave said, that it meets the spec, it meets the drawings and what we want to achieve. Yeah, I was here today to uh, inspect the uh, anchor bolt locations and also uh, the column uh, base plates, uh, which is very important uh, for this particular building because the uh, framing is kind of a mixture of a platform framing system with the uh, post and beam constructions. So the column location is very important and a lot of concentrated load coming through the column to make sure those anchor uh, base plates will hold all the load. Uh, to do that, I have to check the uh, anchor anchoring, how the uh, plates are anchored, and the size of the bolts and the plates, and uh, location-wise, uh, comply to the building uh, drawings. So it looks pretty good. I'm quite uh, happy with the result, what they have done. Reusing resources is a great way to save energy. For example, capturing rain to water your flowers and garden reduces the amount of water needed to be delivered to your home. Also, using a composter helps to reduce waste heading to the landfill. Try to see everything as a resource and actively search for places where you can reuse all the stuff around your home. Hi, I'm Sean, and I'm here to jackhammer a bunch of holes in the wall. Okay, well, I'm, uh, I'm putting on the, uh, the spike that I'm going to be punching through with the mortar, and uh, I'm going to be perforating the wall in sections um, from about halfway down to the end so that they can pull over, uh, backhoe can pull over the wall in uh, cleaner sections instead of creating a, a big mound of, uh, of debris. I guess so they can haul it away uh, it, uh, a little more cleanly. And uh, yeah, that's about it. And then they're going to be backfilling uh, towards the rest of the wall. It looks like it might take you a while. It could possibly. Uh, yeah, the rocks are uh, 
quite close together, so. Well, I don't know, but we'll have to see. But the motor is pretty old, so I mean, it's just, you know, it's just bubbling, so it's not actually that difficult. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it falls apart. Hey, my name's Tyler. I'm with uh, JNR Excavation. I got the road done on the other side there to get access for the machine into the back here for the purpose of taking down this uh, wall. Uh, so the game plan is we had these pillars here so I built a bit of a ramp, a little road to go over top of it so we don't have to destroy the thing. And uh, so I'll come over here, uh, take out a little bit of the material that's in here, you know, put a little bit of sand over top of the filter cloth that's over top of the drainage pipe and the crush. We put the filter cloth to filter out the mud before it hits the drain tile, just to keep all the mud out of the system, so it keeps your, uh, the drain tile clean and everything. So I'll come in, I'll pull a little bit of material out, and I'll put sand down on the, up against the dimple board a couple feet high, and then I'll come over to the wall here and start at the first cut, where they made a cut there, they jackhammered out. And I'll start to pull the wall down and as I get this first eight, ten feet done and then get it all prepped and then I walk in a little further and then do the next eight, ten feet. It's the same process over and over until it's done. What do you love to work with? Oh, definitely uh, my funnest piece of equipment is the excavator. I love digging. It's, it's a great job. How long would it take you to learn something like that? Easily a couple of years to get uh, the... Con like it, it looks very easy all the movements and everything, but to actually jump in and start doing four different things at once with your two hands and not looking at your hands and being aware of your surroundings, people around you, buildings, what have you, and uh, then just your the task at hand and stuff. Definitely a big issue for around here because of the tight quarters and space. I only got like uh, three inches on either side of the machine, so safety is very important. Got the fence right here, the neighbor's fence. And then the foundation, obviously, you don't want to damage anything there, of course. So it's just, uh, that's what makes it a lot, uh, really slow as well. And you got to bring the wall down slowly in small pieces so you're not throwing all the debris right on top of the drainage pipe or hitting the dimple board. Because if you rip that dimple board, then it's got to be, uh, has to be replaced. It takes, it's tricky, like, for like a good two weeks every day and you just maybe get a the hang of the uh, controls. Yeah, it's, it's definitely fun, interesting machines. Never a dull moment, that's for sure. <laughs>